It's not enough just for diplomats and lawmakers because you're going to have a lot of companies over there that are going to be spending a lot of advertising dollars in communist-controlled China. The same people who have, you know, an, a, a, over a million people detained in camps where, of course, we had, we've had a number of reports from the Washington Post and others. You've taken a, a, a major stance against Nike for the imprisonment of Uyghurs. And then the report that came that, yes, some of the factories that they are forced to work in absolutely do supply Nike and some of these other, uh, other, other companies. Talk to me about this. You know, Nike uh, in America, Nike stands with Black Lives Matter, Latino community, LGBTQ community, no Asian hate. But when it comes to China, they remain silent. And then shame on these companies that call themselves show social justice companies, you know, and also athletes need to wake up because, you know, these companies are pretty much using the athletes, right? And, you know, it just before, if you're an athlete, before you, you, you put your signature on a paper, educate yourself a little bit, you know, because there are, when you, whenever you put that jersey on, you put that shoes on, or you put that t-shirt on, there is so much blood, there is so much sweat and oppression behind those items, so think twice. And shame on Nike, and it's unfortunately it's the NBA's biggest sponsor, but, you know, I feel like we need to wake people up, and before you buy it, think twice. Yeah, I, I was thinking, how in the world do we fight against something like that? Because we've been trained in, in significant parts of the country to value money over freedom or value money over other people's freedom as well. And and immediate gratification with products and, and things like that and, and cheap and cheap products. And I was thinking about this when I had I saw your uh, collaboration with the Chinese dissident Badiou Tao and how you had made these amazing shoes that you actually wore on the court. And from what I understand, uh, the CCP banned your games uh, because you had worn these yeah, you had worn these shoes on the court, which I thought was amazing. And you kept doing it, and you never apologized for it. This no, is there a way to make these like more? I because I think that these would sell out if you were to make them. And I know that sounds I'm not trying to sound superficial with it, but I'm thinking of a way to combat the stuff with Nike and everything else to make what they're doing unattractive. You know what's so crazy, and not many people know this, but first my our first game I wore a. Uh, you know, shoe called Free Tibet Shoe, right? Right mm -hmm. before the game, two uh, NBA officials came to me and they, they were begging me to take my shoes off. And I told them, hold on a second. Um, I'm getting ready for my citizenship test. There are 27 amendments. And my first amendment is freedom of speech. And you're trying to take that away from me. I'm not taking them off. And they told me, actually, if you don't take them off, then you're going to get banned. I was like, go tell your boss. I don't care. You know? And... I didn't take him off. I did not play a minute in that game. And at halftime, my manager texted me and said they banned every Celtics game in China. That should show people that is a pure dictatorship are going on in China right now. Um, I feel like, you know, yes, we are going to put the shoes out there for people. And actually, the, all the money that we are going to get from those, those shoes, it's going to go to the cows, at the causes that, you know, like the Tibetan people, Uyghur people in concentration, the Hong Kongers and Taiwanese people. So I'm really excited about those, uh, the shoes that uh, come out.